Hey guys, it's Jake, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at a new and really cool way to play Metro Prime Remastered on the Switch. Let's hop into it. Ever since Metro Prime launched on the GameCube, people have been emulating on PC, whether that's with Dolphin or some other emulator. And by doing this, they're able to use a mouse and keyboard. When the remaster launched earlier this year, people did the same using an emulators like Yuzu. Emulation on PC can be tricky for some people. I know it's tricky for me. But, what if I told you that there was a way that you could use a mouse and keyboard right on the Switch itself? Well, check this out. So I got the, so I got the game right here, Metro Prime Remastered, on the Switch. We plug this in, dock it, wait for it to go. And boom. How about that? Mouse and keyboard support. And I'm going to show you how we got this working. So the way we're able to do this is with this device, the Keymander 2. It's basically a little adapter that takes a mouse and keyboard and emulates controller input. So before I jump into, uh, into Metroid, um, I wanted to go over the I.O. really quick. So there's four ports on this one. Uh, there's a game controller port, a keyboard port, a mouse port, and then a power port. Um, keyboard is obviously with the keyboard, and then mouse is obviously with the mouse, but the interesting thing about the gamepad port is um, it basically lets you use, let's say, a pro controller on an Xbox Series X, um, or even a PS4 or 5. It takes a couple inputs, one for power and one for data. Uh, it won't work without power, uh, it might own like lower power devices, uh, but um, for the most part, you're going to need to do um, you're going to need to use um, both both input, both power and you know power and data. This can also be used for pretty much any Switch game, particularly ones that don't rely on gyro controls. And the nice thing about this is that there's a smartphone app that you can get where you connect this to your phone over Bluetooth, and you can re and then you can manage you know map key mappings, you know, re and you can remap everything. It's awesome. Like that's really helps with. Um, you know, figuring out the controls, what controls are like for, you know, Pedro Pond Remastered. On the subject of all that, um, you know, with all that out of the way, um, I want to go over, like, what it was like using this with Metro Pond Remastered. So, obviously, having the, you know, when I first set this up, you know, when I first, you know, put, you know got from, I got from Amazon, you know, I first, um, you know, um, set it up with the Switch, um, setting up at first was a little weird. So, if you're using this with a wireless mouse and keyboard, um, you need to make sure that you're using one that doesn't require any drivers. So unfortunately, my um, my um, my ball mouse wasn't working with it. But um, this this one was this universal base one was, um, and I had to mess around with the settings a little bit because the uh, the mouse input was uh, was it, it was it was it's not lagging like this like compared to like the other there's there's other ones on Amazon like these at different price points. Um, but compared to those, the Keymander 2 does handle mouse, mouse input a lot better than the other ones, in my opinion. Um, but you do have to mess around with the sensitivity a little bit, and I actually had to max out the sensitivity on this. I think the max is like 200, I think. Uh, and then once I did that, then that was pretty good, and then um, I did have to mess around. I had to mess around with a lot of, you know, the different, you know, the, the different key mappings uh, to find the ones I like the best. Now the other thing to keep in mind is I'm, I'm left-handed, so um, a lot of so a lot of my control keyboard controls are on the left side of the keyboard. The other thing to keep in mind is this works best with um, the dual stick uh, controls mode in Metro Pokemon Master. You could use it with the other ones, maybe not. Like I said before, like you can't really use this with gyro-based controls, so you might be so you might be able to pull it off with the classic with the classic scheme. But honestly, this works best with the dual stick with the dual stick scheme. And yeah, like once it was all up and running, uh, I did. It did feel like I was. It did feel like it was made for. I mean, it didn't really feel. It didn't feel completely like it was made for, um, for a mouse and keyboard. But it definitely felt a lot more natural. Like you know, as a first person adventure, as a first person perspective game. My bad. Um, it did feel a lot better with you know the mouse and keyboard. Uh, it's not perfect though. I, like I want to get that out of the way right now. It's not perfect. Um, there is going to be some jitter, there's going to be some weird, you know, some weird inputs. Um, but overall it was pretty good. Uh, I had a lot, I had, I had a lot of fun messing around with it. It's mostly just messed around with. You could use this to play like an entire game if you wanted to. 
but over time, like I was, I did get quite used to it. I was able to, I was able to like kind of like set up a muscle memory, you know, for like you know switching visors, switching beams, switching from morph ball to first person uh, missiles and all that. Um, yeah, I figured out the, uh, you know, I, I, got, I figured out the um, uh, the pause menu, the map button. There was a couple of things that um, I'm still trying to figure out, and particularly uh, when we're doing when I'm doing the boost ball. Um, I had a really hard time figuring out, um, you know, like using the boost ball and the little ramps. Um, you know, I took a long time. Like I ended up like the the, the angle was weird. I, you know, I, I eventually I figured it out, but I'm still like, I'm still kind of used to that. Um, the other thing I, I the other thing I you know start to figure out is uh, the panning is the navigation on the on the on the map menu. Um, that one's still, that one, you know, because the problem with that one is, um, I start to figure out how to, like, go around the map. Like, you know, like, like, you know, pan around the map, you know, that kind of thing. Another thing I had trouble with was uh, the lock-on. So I ended up, uh, I ended up doing, um, I ended up setting it to, um, uh, the middle mouse button. Uh, which isn't ideal because it, which is what I did because it's also where, uh, we're doing, where, also where I have set to, well, I have, I mean, the, the button for, um, uh, the fire button is like right next to it, so it's a little weird. Um, but I couldn't find a better key for it. So it'd be nice if there was like a way that I could, it'd be nice if I could find like a better key for it, is, is basically the gist of it. On the subject of lock on, you don't really need it for this kind of setup. Like, you know, like it, it sends like the, the, um, it's sensitive enough that, you know, you can just, that you can just, you know, use your mouse to, um, to like, I guess, manually lock on. Um, you know, without the need for the lock on, it's pretty. It's like it's like it's almost like you know any kind of FPS. You, know, you can just you know just move your mouse, you move your cursor like right onto the space pilot. Um, but there were times where I did need to use the lock on. You know when you know for like fast, for like fast moving, um, fast moving enemies. So yeah, that's pretty much the end of this video. Um, if you want to try the key, if you want to try this out and want to try the key mando too, I'll put the link down below for that. Um, and let me know what you guys think. And let me know what you guys think. Is this better than PC emulation, or is this not as good as PC emulation? Uh, and uh, yeah, let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, this has been this has been Jake. Thanks for watching. And as always, feel free to subscribe and hit the like button. Helps out a ton. And we will see you in the next video. Have a good one.